بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى today I'm going to share with you some of my experiences in Hajj especially this year because سبحان الله this year before we go to Hajj we were very worried about the constructions that are taking place around Al-Haram and we were subhanallah afraid that we will not be able to perform our Hajj properly but subhanallah this year was one of the easiest year in Hajj ever I have seen since I started to go to to go to Hajj plus this is the only or this is the first time for me to kiss the black stone this year it was, يعني, I can say, such a nice feeling, subhanallah. So this year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very, very easy for me to go and alhamdulillah, touch the black stone and, and kiss it. In Hajj, one of the things that we see in Hajj, there is no room for pride. There is no room for arrogance. There is no room for looking down upon others. There is no preference nor distinction given to anyone based on nationality or wealth or standing in society. You feel, and here comes one part of the khutbah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his farewell hajj, لا فضل لعربي على أعجمي إلا بالتقوى. So you can say, and even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most righteous. And you can see this in Hajj when you see all people, subhanallah, making the same dua, wearing the same cloth. This is you feel the humbleness and you feel that we all came for one purpose, for one goal, is to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord. Also, in Hajj, it's, uh, you feel that it's a complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is actually one of the main meanings of the word Islam is submission or true submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see it in Hajj. Yani no human and no one can claim that he have full understanding of, every, of everything. Sometimes we do things without understanding why we are doing it. But subhanAllah, we do it simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do it. And this is the true submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We remember also when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, Fear Allah regarding your women. Fear Allah regarding your women. And when we talk about women, we are talking about our mothers, our sisters, our wives, and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to take care of them. So actually, if you look at the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find it يعني, covered almost every aspect of this religion from the top which is Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until subhanallah everything he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam covered in his speech your blood, your wealth are sacred upon you like the sacredness of this day, of this month, of this city so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it clear and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said I left you on a shining path and he said I left among you the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and if you stick to it then you will not be astray in Hajj also uh, one of the things that uh, we notice in Hajj you see the willingness and you see the sacrifice of other people Yani subhanallah, while making tawaf around the Kaaba, you meet all types of people. The sick, some people on wheelchairs, some people with one leg, some people are sick, and all of them came. You don't know how much and how long it took them to save 
that amount of money to, co to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perform the farida of Hajj. So this is uh, very important. In Hajj, honestly, I repeat this sentence again, and my brother Fahim said it before me, in Hajj, you feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see the Kaaba, yes, you feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The feeling that you have when you stand in front of the Kaaba, even though Kaaba is a building made of rocks and stones, but subhanallah, this is it shows that this is the true religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the religion of, of Islam. When you go to Mecca and you visit the places, you feel the status of those places before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you stand in Arafah, you knew that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day was standing here and he delivered his farewell speech. When you go to Mecca and then you make tawaf around the Kaaba, you know that Ibrahim alayhi salam himself was the one who raised the foundation of that house. When you go to perform sa'i between as safa and al Marwa, you remember Hajar and her son Ismail. Subhanallah, these things by itself, if we think deeply about it and contemplate over the, 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 the magnificence of those places, this is, it will bring such a feeling that you will never ever have it in any other place. That's why when, when we go to Hajj, this is, this is the place where the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were here. This is the place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived here and his companions after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is, gives you a nice feeling that especially where, especially as you said in Arafah and subhanallah you go to at uh, Wadi Urana, the valley of Urana, the place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered his khutbah and you, 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 subhanallah you think that the Prophet when they was here and Thousands of companions were standing around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listening to him and subhanallah after more than 1400 years ago we are here again following the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and spreading the message of Islam after him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the khutbah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every single statement of the khutbah Honestly, we need it, but we are in desperate need, in dire need of it to apply it in our daily life. Yeah, and if you look at it from A to Z, from like uh, your, 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 your blood, your dignity, your, your um, uh, wealth are sacred upon you. We need this and we see what's going on everywhere in the Muslim countries. If we go, for example, fear Allah regarding good women, and we see how people treat their wives and if we see when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbid usury, interest, riba and we still find some people are dealing with it. Honestly, if you look at the khutbah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every single word and every single statement, we need it in our daily life. If we apply and implement the khutbah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I say that inshallah ta'ala we will live in peace. We will live in peace. But if you look at it now, everything the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in, in his farewell speech, people actually are going against it. People are going against it. So we need to go back again to uh, following the commands of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then with the day that we do that, inshaAllah Ta'ala, we will succeed in this dunya and akhirah. ألا إن الزمان قد استدار كهيئته يوم خلق الله السماوات والأرض السنة اثنى عشر شهرا منها أربعة حرم ثلاث متواليات ذو القعدة وذو الحجة والمحرم ورجب مضر الذي بين جمادى وشعبان ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أتدرون أي يوم هذا قلنا الله ورسوله أعلم 
قال أليس يوم النحر قلنا نعم قال أتدرون أي بلد هذا قلنا الله ورسوله أعلم قال أليس البلد الحرام قلنا نعم قال أتدرون أي شهر هذا قلنا الله ورسوله أعلم قال أليس شهر ذي الحجة قلنا نعم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن دماءكم وأموالكم وأعراضكم حرام عليكم كحرمة يومكم هذا في شهركم هذا في بلدكم هذا ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ترجعوا بعض لا ترجعوا بعدي كفارا يضرب بعضكم رقاب بعض ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أيها الناس إن أباكم واحد وإن ربكم واحد كلكم لآدم وآدم من تراب لا فضل لعربي على أعجمي إلا بالتقوى ثم أوصى صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال اتقوا الله في النساء فإنهن عوان عندكم أخذتموهن بأمانة الله واستحللتم فروجهن بكلمة الله فاتقوا الله في النساء قالها صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثا ثم ذكر صلى الله عليه وسلم حرمة الربا فقال ألا إن كل ربا في الجاهلية موضوع وإن أول ما أضعه هو ربا العباس ابن عبد المطلب ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم هل بلغت اللهم فاشهد اللهم هل بلغت اللهم فاشهد ثم أمرهم صلى الله عليه وسلم قال فليبلغ الحاضر الغائب فرب مبلغ أوعى من سامع فرب مبلغ أوعى من سامع صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم